Good morning, welcome to the first Sunday in Advent. We are still online, who would have thought that at the beginning of this year? But that doesn't stop us preparing our hearts and our minds and our spirits to the celebration of Jesus' birth. So we're going to come and we're going to begin this service with the lighting of our Advent candle. As we begin Advent and light our first candle, we are reminded that while we are unable to gather in person for worship, we remain united in our focus towards Bethlehem. This is our first candle of Advent, and we pray that as its flame shines in many places unknown to us today, as it shines into people's lives and experiences that are different to our own, lives that are bruised by uncertainty, illness, loneliness, disruption, and in places conflict and oppression, that through the shared lighting of this candle together, we will not be strangers, but will share a common journey as we place Jesus at the centre of our lives. And so, whatever our situations, may the source of all peace bring his peace and calm assurance into our lives, both today and forever. Amen. One of the great joys about Advent is the range of songs that we have to sing and Christmas carols as we celebrate the coming of the birth of Jesus. We're going to use a song that we've used a couple of years ago on one of our Carols by Candlelight services to introduce the service. And so I invite you to sing the words as they appear on the screen. This is a song from Resound Worship and it's titled In the Beginning.
Hi everyone, I'm really excited, not because it's the first Sunday in Advent, but because every day I get to eat a chocolate from my Advent calendar. Do you have an Advent calendar? Some people, instead of a calendar, have an Advent candle like this one, and they burn a little down each day. But why? Why does Advent matter? Advent is all about preparing and getting ready for Christmas. Not in the terms of the Christmas shopping, but in getting our hearts ready to welcome Jesus and to be followers of Jesus. This year we know that Christmas is going to be different in so many ways. But the message of Christmas never changes. That in Jesus, God is with us and he loves us. This year, may we all be prepared to welcome Jesus Christ into our lives. Let's pray. Dear Lord, help us in this time of Advent to be ready to celebrate Jesus' birth. Amen. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This week, many people waited with bated breath to know what would be allowed at Christmas. Before, all we'd heard when government ministers were interviewed was that they were working towards measures that would mean that we would be able to celebrate Christmas because Christmas was, in their words, the most important holiday of the year. When I first had that phrase, uh, my, I, I used to kind of leap with joy inside because I had this vision that every time a government minister was interviewed, that because Christmas was the most important holiday of the year, that they would talk about the centrality of the birth of Jesus to our celebration of our Christian holiday and our Christmas holiday. But alas, I've been so wrong, haven't I? Instead, the season of Advent and Christmas is the most important time of the year for so many because people simply want to party. We've heard a lot over the last few weeks about the, the cost, potential cost of Christmas, not financially, but in terms of maybe five days of festivity could lead to five weeks of another lockdown. And there's been a lot of discussion, hasn't there, as to whether what is right and how we judge that. 
And yet, whilst the government, it seemed, were trying to put off thinking about Christmas, there were a lot of people who, who did quite the opposite, didn't they? People who, in the middle of November, put up their Christmas trees, or they put their lights on the outside of their houses. In the middle of November, you'd drive past a house, and outside would be a lit Santa Claus or, or a lit reindeer. Perhaps they did so because this year, they know Christmas is not going to be like any other year that we've known in the past. We know that the numbers for households gathering together are limited. Where we can gather is affected. How we gather is affected. And so maybe this year, unlike any other year, maybe what we actually need to do is just step back for a moment and think and reflect about Christmas. Because maybe God is asking us to use this moment to think, so what is Christmas really all about? Because on the very first Christmas, there were no office parties. There were no trees with lights on in the corner of the room. There were no decorations. There was no family dinner. Okay, granted, there was a kind of king speech, as Herod said to the Magi, that they needed to go back to him when they found the child. So maybe Queen Elizabeth has a little bit of a right to have her three o'clock on a Sunday afternoon still. But instead, what we find at that first Christmas is the image of a simple family. Mary, Joseph, and a baby in a manger. You know, in the midst of this simple family, there are some remarkable lessons for us to learn. Firstly, there's a lesson all about simple love. As we look at a simple family, we're reminded of a simple love, the love shown by Mary and Joseph towards one another, but also their love and their devotion to God in their obedience to him, and we're going to pick up on that in a few weeks' time. My prayer is that in our own families, that we might also reflect a simple love towards one another as well as towards God. Because Christmas is a time, even with the more stress that we have this year, isn't it, when at family gatherings we fall out with one another, when we get into arguments, when we have to handle our own disappointments. And all of those things add to the stress that we feel, added to the fact that we miss those who we love who can't be with us at that time. And I have to say in those moments that we need to show a simple love in our families as we show grace towards one another, reflecting the love of a simple family of Mary, Joseph and Jesus. But secondly, in this simple family, there is the image of a simple baby. We look upon this image of a simple family and we're reminded of the message of Emmanuel, God with us. This is the message of God coming among his creation. Just as today, God is Emmanuel, God is with us. He's with us in the pandemic. He's with us in our difficulties. He's with us in all of our circumstances. And so as we come to Christmas, as we come to this simple Christmas, May we reflect, reflect this phrase, a simple family in our lives, as we focus our hearts on the one who is laying in a manger. See, I pray that our response this year is more than just to see Christmas as an important time for holidays and, and parties that actually it's more than just endeavouring to, to put Christ back into Christmas. But instead that we recognise that God Emmanuel, God with us, means that we need to ensure that we don't just put Christ back in Christmas, but that we put him daily at the centre of our lives. That we put Christ back into the heart and the centre of all that we do. Because whilst our celebrations are allowed by government to last for five days, the message of the manger, it's about a celebration of God's love 
both now and for all eternity. It's beyond those five days, it's about now and forever. So in a moment we're going to come and we're going to pray together. But before we do so, we're going to listen to a piece of music. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for this image at Christmas of a simple family. Thank you that as we come to that, your manger, as we come into that stable, that we find you, Mary and Joseph. Thank you that you didn't enter this world in an elaborate way but you came gently into this world, just as you come gently alongside us to be love, God's love with us. Help us this Christmas to reflect that simple love to our families, to our friends and to our neighbours. But also help us as we come simply to you, Lord Jesus, to put you at the heart and the centre of our lives. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing a Christmas carol together. This is from the Northern Baptist Association's, Association's Big Sing. And this is Heart the Herald Angels Sing.
Thank you for joining with me then this morning. Uh, I've just noticed that Mary and Joseph have been quite good at doing their social distancing. Perhaps I ought to stand them a little bit nearer uh, to each other this morning as they're on the table uh, here next to me. This afternoon at three o'clock, we're holding our online memorial service. It's a pre-recorded service. So thank you to those who've sent names in and they'll be used this afternoon. So please join us if you're able to at three o'clock or you can watch that service during uh, the week. It's an opportunity to remember in our own hearts and minds those who we love and have lost as we trust them, but also ourselves into God's care. You can find our details of our Christmas services on our website if you follow the links on the front page. There's a big image that says Simple Christmas. If you click on that, it will take you to the right pages. If you're exploring faith and you want to know more, then please email us at connect at cpbc.co.uk. We are looking in the new year at joining with World Baptist and Milton Baptist Church to hold an online Alpha course. Uh, so if you want to find out more about that and what the Christian faith is, uh, just message us through the church and uh, we'll put you in contact with uh, those dates and the arrangements uh, for that course. But we're going to close this morning and throughout Advent we're going to use these same words each week and I ask you therefore with the words that are on the screen if you would read them with me. We say together, may starlight guide your steps towards this place of wonder. May angels sing their news as you travel to the manger. May promise fill these days as we recall a simple birth. And may faith remind us that Emmanuel will soon be with us, God with us, now and always. Amen.